While I was trying to build a professional quality oil painting portfolio, I got a lot of bad advice. I also got a lot of blank stares. Not only did that suck, it made it that much harder to get where I needed to go and make the progress I needed to make with the way that I painted in my portfolio. And now that this is my full-time job, I know exactly what I needed to hear, 100%. And that's what I wanna share with you today. All right, so let's jump into it. Here are three things every serious painter should know to make it through your painting journey and reach your big artistic goals. My first piece of advice is that this is a long journey. So the most important thing is that you figure out how not to give up, which means having as much fun as you can. I talk about mindset, habit formation, mitigating burnout, and navigating a tricky learning curve a lot on my channel. So much so that I put together a whole playlist of videos that you should check out that I will link up in the corner. But one thing I have only just recently understood is that there's a particular moment in your painting journey where you go from being a confident beginner to suddenly being advanced enough to see exactly what the gap looks like between what you're doing and what you want to be able to do. You realize it's not just going to be another couple of weeks of practice for you to capture an effortless likeness or create brushwork that is loose yet accurate. You realize the commission that you're making for a relative of a beloved family moment is not going to magically transform into the kind of painting that you love from your favorite painters. In short, you realize that the painters you admire needed decades of practice to get where they were when they made your favorite paintings, and you aren't going to shortcut that in a year or so. And that's not because there is anything wrong with you, not anything wrong with your talent, not anything wrong with your skill. Really great painting is an art, and we do not use the word mastery here lightly. It's going to take a tremendous amount of time for literally any person. So we may have a prodigy appear on the scene, and we think that because she's young, she must not have needed much time. But young up-and-comers usually have actually put in an extreme amount of time already, without the judgment that we often put on ourselves as adults. Think about it. If a kid was homeschooled and they had that excessive obsessive, childlike zeal for their craft, they could probably put in 10,000 hours pretty dang quickly and easily. By contrast, let's take a look at the kind of pressure we put on ourselves as adults. You know, the kind of pressure where you're smart, you work hard, you don't want to look silly, so you shouldn't have to. The fact is though, we're all going to look silly. And being smart doesn't have a lot to do with honing a craft. There isn't a Cliff's Notes for painting like Schmidt or Zorn or Soroya. You can't shortcut it. And you can't outsmart it. But you can make the journey as efficient as possible. Which brings me to my second piece of advice. This involves getting clear on your goal so you know how to align your efforts with what you ultimately want to make. Becoming great at painting may take a lot of time and work, but I want you to imagine two scenarios. In one, you imagine a painter who paints for about five hours per week. He may paint whatever cute pictures he finds to paint from. He may try new colors out regularly. He may work in oil some weeks and colored pencil in others. Sometimes he focuses on realistic color and rendering, and other weeks he may try out a trendy, new, stylized kind of illustration. Now imagine a painter who knows their goal. They want to paint loosely and be a great colorist who has amazing pops of color, but enough grays and neutrals to ground the image and make it feel highly realistic. Actually, even more so, to make it feel even realer than real. They want their subject to mainly be portraits, let's say. Now, this second painter puts in the same amount of time into their practice, 
And occasionally, they do have extra projects to try out. Sometimes they go outside and paint a landscape, or maybe they try their hand at sculpture every now and again, changing things up when they need a bit of inspiration or a change of pace. Who out of these two painters do you think will make the most progress in a given direction? Who do you think will notice that progress and leverage it as forward momentum? There's nothing wrong with trying new things, as evidenced by the painter in the second example, who regularly mixes things up and tries something new for fun. But knowing your goal means that you can set very clear benchmarks for the skills you need to develop, and that can give you a great deal of direction and clarity on what's important and what isn't. So if you guessed that the second painter in this example would probably ultimately make more progress toward mastering their craft or taking their work in a given direction, from everything I have seen, you would be right. This is why I do what I do when I work directly with painters who are serious about their goals. I know how helpful it is to have a sounding board to clarify the best direction to try out, help you course correct if you realize that maybe this isn't the right path, and give you the exercises that make the most sense for your goal. If that sounds like you, check out the link I have in the description about mentoring because we could be a great fit. But whether you choose to get support or not, I want to underscore the importance of creating a painting practice that is fun and intrinsically rewarding, and just how important it is to have a way to see incremental growth in your work. I want to give you some examples of how I've made my practice more fun and rewarding, but before I do, I want to address one very frequently asked question. And that is, but Chelsea, if I pick a direction, won't I trip myself up? Like, what if I pick the wrong path? Or what if I just like, you know, trying things out and exploring all different types and ways of being creative? And to that I would have you go back and listen to the example I gave over again, because the second painter in the example still does try out a lot of new things. That painter has the ability to figure out if they have set off on the wrong path. But the fact that they have very constructively and proactively thought about how to master skills that they need to paint in a given way, well, even if they change their trajectory, All of that work is probably actually going to carry over pretty well, but the painter who kind of spins her wheels and um, is constantly trying new things and isn't clear on the direction she wants to go in, she actually probably won't practice and build a lot of the skills necessary for mastery. So every time she tries something new and thinks maybe this is the path, it's not going to actually add up in the same way. Okay, now with that FAQ answered, here are some of the ways that I have learned to make my painting practice fun and rewarding. So most importantly, I've learned that I need to prioritize working with people. I've tried working alone in my studio, I've painted with friends over platforms like Discord or Zoom, and I've painted with friends in person. And whenever I'm painting with people, it is night and day versus painting alone. Granted, I know that creating or finding opportunities to paint with people can be tough. I have found that painting with the right people as a result is way more important than just having company. So there are times when painting together in person is easy and doable, and other times where it's better to paint together with friends virtually. Here are the things that I've learned that are important about who I choose to paint with. First, If I want their feedback, I need to trust their eye, their skill sets, and their expertise, and know that it's relevant to what I'm doing. I also need to trust them to be kind and supportive if I do want that feedback. So just being a great artist isn't enough. I need to know that they respect me and they respect the work that's gone into something, and they know how to give feedback in a way that won't shut another painter down. I also respect these people that I paint with enough to where I feel that little bit of competitive spirit when I paint 
with them because I want to impress them and I want them to want to impress me. That actually gives me a lot of energy in a painting session with other people. And then the final piece is probably the most important, which is that I genuinely enjoy talking to them and spending time with them. And this is actually really important because I actually do get together with friends who aren't necessarily making the same kind of art that I am. Maybe they are working on sci-fi watercolor landscapes for fun, or maybe they are painting miniatures for D&D. We get together, and when I work with those friends, we aren't getting together for them to give me feedback on my work or vice versa. We're really not exchanging a lot of like high level information about honing our craft, but these people are my really good friends. Um, and just spending time with them is really great. And it, there's something very nice about getting together and just all of us working on something creative, even if we really can't contribute anything to what the other is doing. So sometimes I do intentionally seek out other artists who work like I do, in which case all the other points above apply. And sometimes they don't apply because I'm getting together with friends it's not for feedback. And what matters most here is that I enjoy their company and I don't feel weird about painting in front of them because we're all doing something creative together. By contrast, I don't enjoy painting with people who are annoying to spend time with generally or who offer me advice that I didn't ask for or don't respect. So I have boundaries around painting with those people. The second big thing that I do to create a sense of joy in my own practice is that I try to be in the moment with my paintings and enjoy the act of putting the paint down rather than getting attached to a particular result. This gives me permission to mix things up, go paint outside, try new techniques, and generally just be more mindful of my mood and present with what I'm making. I could probably make an entire video about this particular bullet point all by itself. And it's important that I note here that I think this reflects what's important for me at this stage in my painting journey. It took me a long time of getting my skills to a certain place where it made sense to me to start just being kind of present in the moment as I paint and not super attached to the outcome. So I don't know, this could be generally applicable, um, but it also could be advice that's like very particular to a certain stage in the process. I'm actually really curious what you all think and whether that's something that, you know, is kind of clicking in your brains right now or whether it's something you've tried. I, I want to hear how this resonates with you all. All right. So now we've talked about creating joy in your creative practice, and we've talked about creating the most efficient roadmap to your goals as possible. And now I want to talk about tracking progress. And this leads into my third and final piece of advice for painters who are serious about their art practices. And that is that the thing is, it's normal when you're on a long-term journey toward a big, exciting goal to feel like you're making no progress because that goal is so lofty. And let's face it, when you're on a long journey, it's just more difficult to see your own growth. So you have to figure out how to track your goals based on small incremental improvements, not whether or not you've quote, made it yet. So already in this video, we've talked about the importance and utility of having a vision of what your ultimate goal looks like. But beyond having that vision, it's important to also visualize what the next step on your path to that goal looks like. Maybe that looks like noticing that you touched the paint on your canvas way less than usual, so that this time it doesn't look overworked. That's actually a goal I saw myself hit in this painting, and it's something that I'm really trying to dial in with my painting practice generally. I'm not necessarily looking for every painting to be better than the last. I'm paying attention to whether that kind of habit starts to feel more and more automatic and a little bit easier over time. Okay, let's talk about another example of an incremental way to track progress. 
So maybe this looks like successfully mixing up tricky neutral tones that are hard to see and color match correctly. Or successfully establishing the drawing of the face and double checking that it's accurate before you move on to blocking in your color. This is why knowing your goal is so important. It helps you to then break your goal down into mini goals that let you observe the incremental progress that's often invisible to us. That being said, I know it's tough, which is why I have an hour-long masterclass dedicated to this specific topic. There's a link in the description if you want to get a better grasp on what tracking your progress toward your unique painting goal looks like. All right, so the result of putting all of this together is the bottom line of this whole video. The biggest thing that helps you to achieve your artistic ambitions in the long run is to show up to your practice over and over. If you don't have that, you're simply not going to get there. So you have to figure out how to make it as intrinsically rewarding and fun as possible. You have to figure out how to mitigate the crummy feelings that can set in when you realize that you probably do have a lot of work ahead of you. You have to make sure you're recognizing wins and seeing improvement on a regular basis, which means a better set of metrics to track than simply, have I arrived yet? And you may need to make sure that you remember during these periods when you feel a little bit down or burnt out to give yourself the encouragement you need to come back to it. The more I think about this, the more I actually see the fun piece and the goal piece as being two key variables that help you achieve the ultimate goal of sticking with it in the long run. So you actually need this balance of having a clear idea of your goal and how to work toward that goal. And then on the flip side, how to make sure that you really enjoy getting into the studio and painting. And if you remember to strike that balance and during times where you're like really just working so hard, you're like grinding out the reps in the studio and it starts to become a little bit of a slog, you can remember like, hey, I need to mix this up or do something to make this fun and like take some pressure off of myself and relieve some of this stress. And on the flip side of that, we don't just want to be having fun all the time if we are serious about reaching that goal. And don't get me wrong, I want people to have fun painting. I think it's the most wonderful thing. I don't want to take away anyone's fun. That being said, this is a channel about reaching your most exciting painting goals. I know that there are other people who can like really help you tap in to the joy all by itself that's a little bit less goal directed. So the result is that we need to figure out how to give ourselves an actual direction to go in while maintaining that sense of joy. And that's why balancing the excitement and the joy and the enthusiasm for the process with having a clear goal is so important. If you strike this balance, again, I I can't repeat this enough. The result is that it should keep you coming back to your practice in the long term. And after you've been at this in a way that's goal-directed and intentional, and you've done that for several years, one day you're going to wake up and realize that the goals that you set for yourself in the beginning, you have exceeded them. And that's what I hope this video brought you that much closer to. If you want help on that path, I have limited spots available to speak with painters interested in working with me. I'm going to link that below in the description along with a link to view this painting as well as all my available work on my website. I hope this video has helped to make your path that much more clear and has given you the mindset tools that you need to stay consistent. I really want to hear how it goes. I want to hear all about your successes, so please share them with me down in the comments. And until next time, happy painting. Energy. How do you project energy? I think I found it. Perfect backdrop. Whew, I hope this footage looks good when I play it back. It should not be this hard to frame yourself decently in a shot. Like, how do people do this for a
I guess I do this for a living. I don't do this for a living though. <sighs> Maybe I do now. <laughs>